Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of... Wish that chair had spun faster. Big data, big questions. So today's question comes in from some of the things that I've been seeing in my live session, so some of the chats, and then also comments that have been posted on some of the videos that we have out there. So if you have any comments or have any ideas for the show, make sure you put them in the comment section here below or just let me know and I'll try my best to answer these. So this question comes in around, should I learn Spark or should I learn Hadoop in 2019? What's your opinion, right? Like a lot of people are just starting out and they're like, hey, where do I start, right? Like I've heard Spark, I've heard Hadoop's dead. Like what do, what do we do here? How do you tackle it? Um, if you've been watching the show for a long time, you've probably seen me answer questions similar to this and compare the differences between Spark and Hadoop. So this is still a viable question because I've actually changed a little bit the way I think about it. And I'm going to take a different approach with the way that I answer this question, especially for 2019. In the past, I've said that, you know, it really just depends on what you want to do, right? Should you learn Spark? Should you learn Hadoop? Why can't you learn both? Which I still think, you know, from the perspective of your overall you know, learning technology and career, uh, you're probably going to want to learn both of them, right? But if, you know, if we're talking about, hey, I've only got 30 days, 60 days, you know, I want the quickest results possible, Thomas, how can, you know, how can I move into a data engineer role, find a, you know, find a career, you know, maybe I've just graduated college or maybe I'm in high school and I want to get an internship that maybe turns into a full-time gig, help me, you know, in the next 30 to 90 days, get something going. Instead of saying depends, I'm really going to tell you that I think it's going to be Spark. And that's a little bit of a change. And I'll talk about some of the reasons why I think that changed too. But before we jump into that, let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, nomenclature that we have to do around Hadoop, right? So when we talk about Hadoop, a lot of times that we're talking about Hadoop and MapReduce and HDFS in this, in, in this whole piece, right? From the perspective of writing, you know, writing MapReduce jobs or processing our data, Spark is far and clear the leader in that, right? Like even MapReduce is being kind of decoupled, has been decoupled and more and more jobs are not written in MapReduce, they're more written with, you know, Flink or Spark or, you know, Apache Beam or even, you know, Tez on the back end, right? So I think, you know, that war has been kind of won by Spark for the most part. Secondly, when we talk about Hadoop, I like to talk about it from an ecosystem perspective, right? Like we're talking about HDFS, we're talking about even Spark included in that and Flume all the different pieces that make up what we call the big data ecosystem, right? And we just call that with the Hadoop ecosystem. But the way that I'm answering this question today is like, hey, I'm looking for something in 2019 that can really move the needle, right? Like where, you know, what do you see that's in demand? And, I, and I'll say that I see Spark is very, very much in demand. And I even see Spark being used outside of just HDFS as well, too. That's not saying that if you, you know, if you've learned Hadoop or if you've learned HDFS, you've gone down the wrong path. I don't think that's the case. And I think that's still viable. But you're asking me, what can you do to move the needle, right, in 30 to 90 days? I think, I think digging down and becoming a Spark developer, I think that opens up a career option, right? And I think that's one of the quickest ways that you can get and one of the big things that we've seen out there with the roles. Roles for data engineers. Another huge advantage, so we've talked about it a little bit on this channel, but I mean, the big announcement for what Databricks is doing from the perspective of, you know, in investment and what their valuation is. They're at like $2.5 billion um, advancement and they're huge in the Spark community, right? Like they're part of the incubators and um, on a lot of the steering committees for Spark. They have some tools and everything that they sell on top of that, but it's just, it's just really opened my eyes to, you know, what, what's out there. You know, I knew Spark was pretty big, but the fact that Databricks and kind of where they're going, I think that's, that, that's a lot of what we're seeing. Another point too, you've heard me talk about it a good bit, but you know where we're going with deep learning frameworks and bringing it into you know the core big data, big data area. Uh, Spark is going to be that big bridge, I believe. So uh, people love to develop in Spark. Spark's been out there, and so it gives you the opportunity now with Project Hydrogen and some of the other things that are coming to be able to take and do ETL over GPUs, but also you know port port data and be able to implement and use TensorFlow or PyTorch or even Cafe 2. If you're looking in 2019 to choose between Spark and Hadoop to find something in the next 30 to 90 days, like I would go all in with Spark, right? Like I would learn Spark, you know, whether it be from Java, Scala, or Python, but be able to learn and be able to start doing some tutorials around that, being able to code, being able to build out your own projects. And I think that that's gonna really open your eyes and that can really get the needle moving. At some point you wanna go back and you wanna learn how to, you know, how to navigate data with HDFS, how to, you know, how to find things that are going on from the Hadoop ecosystem, right? Cause it's all a big piece here. But if you're asking me the one, the one thing to do to move the needle in 30 to 90 days, learn Spark. 
Well, thanks again. That's all I have today for Big Data Big Questions. Remember, subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss an episode of Big Data Big Questions. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section here below. Go we'll answer them on Big Data Big Questions.